Hi, I'm Yuyun Tian from IBM Research. Today, I'll present IBM DB2 Graph, supporting synergistic and retrofitable graph queries inside IBM DB2. I don't think I need to tell you why querying graph data is important. There's also no shortage of graph databases in the market today. One would ask, why would you guys build another graph database? Well, DB2 Graph is not yet another graph database. We saw two major challenges facing most of today's graph databases. The first problem is the fragmented DB problem. Most of today's graph databases are standalone. They only handle graph queries very well. But real applications often have mixed workload, containing SQL, graph, machine learning, and others. In order to support a heterogeneous workload, the developers have to move data around different systems. Second, although graph databases only flourished in the recent years, graph data, which essentially capture relationships between real-world objects, have been around since the beginning of data management. So how do you query these existing graph data stored in a relational database? Well, today, you pretty much have to export your relational data into one of those graph databases. Of course, this data transfer is very expensive, and it is a lot of work to make sure the two copies of data are consistent. We build a DB2 graph to specifically address these challenges. DB2 graph is a converged database solution where polyquery languages or APIs are supported over the shared data. In particular, it is middle layer between graph applications and the DB2 relational engine. There's no change to the existing DB2. DB2 graph supports the popular Tinkerpop Gremlin graph query language. So there's no change to our existing Gremlin-based applications. Most importantly, DB2 graph overlays a property graph on top of existing relational data. So it enables graph queries on existing graph data stored in relational databases. There's no secondary copy of data and no schema change. With DB2 Graph, SQL and Graph Analytics can synergistically work on the same data. The synergy between SQL and Graph means that there's no disturbance to your existing relational applications, either OLAP, OLTP, or HTAP. And ACID transactions updates through the SQL side are visible to the graph analysis instantaneously. Now let's talk about how we overlay a property graph onto relational data. On the left-hand side, we have four relational tables, a patient table, a disease table, a has disease table, and a disease ontology table. DB2 graph exposes graph view of the same data, where you see vertices labeled as patient and disease, and edges connecting patients to diseases and also connecting diseases to other diseases. In DB2 graph, we essentially map each vertex or edge to a single row in the DB2 database. So graph overlay really boils down to mapping the vertex set and the edge set of the graph to the relational tables. This is achieved by an overlay configuration file. The configuration file defines a set of vertex tables and edge tables. In this example, patient and disease are the vertex tables and has disease and disease ontology are the edge tables. Then for each such vertex or edge, it specifies how to define the required fields of a vertex or an edge as well as the properties. For a vertex table, it first specifies the schema name and the table name, then how to define the vertex ID. Note that vertex ID has to be unique in the property graph, so we often have to add a string prefix to the primary keys to make the ID unique. Next, we define the label. Labels are used to indicate the type of vertices or edges. In DB2 graph, the label can either come from a column in the table or it can be defined as a string constant. Actually, the latter case is more common since most of the cases, all the vertices or edges from the same table are of the same type. Finally, the properties are mapped to some columns of the table. Edge tables are defined similarly to vertex table. 
except that we also need to define the source and destination vertex IDs of the edges and which tables the source and destination vertex are from, vertices are from. Note that the graph overlay can be defined on both base tables and views. One relational table can be used as multiple vertex tables or multiple edge tables or both as vertex tables and edge tables. Users can handcraft the overlay configuration file, but we also provide an automatic overlay generator, which utilizes the primary and foreign key constraints to infer relationships among data. Here is an architecture overview of DB2 graph. It includes the Tinkerpop stack and four native system modules. I'm going to use an example Gremlin query to demonstrate how the different modules of the system work together. Before we can run the query, the corresponding property graph has to be opened for traversal. The topology module reads the overlay configuration file and establishes the graph overlay mapping. Then the query goes through the Tinkerbox stack where it is parsed and compiled into a logical query plan with a number of steps. Analogous to query optimization in database, a Tinkerpop logical plan can be muted into a more optimized plan by applying a number of traversal strategies. In DB2 graph, we add a number of optimized provider strategies in the traversal strategy module. After applying the DB2 graph optimization strategies, the logical plan is muted into a more optimized query plan. After that, the logical plan is translated into the actual physical implementation. Some of these steps in the physical plan result in calling the graph structure API in the graph structure module. Implementation of these APIs in turn requires accessing the graph overlay information maintained in the topology module and calling the SQL dialect module to generate DB2 SQL queries. Finally, the SQL queries are submitted to DB2 and results are converted to the required form and returned back to the user. In DB2 graph, we add a lot of optimization techniques for better performance. The first category of optimizations are traversal strategies. They muted a query plan for generating more optimized SQL. An example is to push down Gremlin predicate projections and aggregations into DB2. This example query retrieves vertices that have a property called name with value Alice and only, return, only returns the age and address properties of such vertices. The default plan has three steps. The first step access all the vertices in the graph by issuing select star from vertex table on each vertex table. Then the second step applies the filter on the result of step one. Finally, the third step applies projection on the result of step two. This is of course very inefficient. Our optimized strategy is able to combine all the three steps together and push the predicate and projection into the generated SQL. The second category of optimizations utilize graph topology information to eliminate the unnecessary tables that are queried at runtime. For example, this query only retrieves vertices with label patient. Based on the graph overlay, we can directly pinpoint to the patient table. In another example, this query fetches vertices with a property named, uh, with property called name. In the overlay, only the patient vertex table has a property called name. So we can avoid querying the disease table altogether. For more optimization techniques, please refer to our paper. Although we didn't design DB2 graph as yet another graph database, we nevertheless compare DB2 graph with two existing graph databases. GDBX, a popular commercial graph database with its name anonymized, and Genesgraph, a popular open source graph database. 
we're using link bench graphs and queries for the comparison. Let's first look at query latency. Janus graph is always the slowest among the three. For the smaller link bench 10M data, GDBX performs the best. This is not a surprise. Since, since GDBX has a very aggressive caching mechanism, this smaller data set can fit entirely in the in-memory cache. However, when we move to the much larger link bench 100M data set, db2graph even beats GDBX up to 1.7x. When we look at throughput, db2graph is the clear winner in all cases. This is because the underlying db2 engine is, is extremely good at handling concurrent queries. To conclude, I've introduced IBM db2graph. It is a converged SQL and graph solution. It can retrofit to existing graph data stored in relational databases. SQL and graph can work synergistically together on the same data. There's no disturbance to the huge number of existing relational applications and asset transaction updates from the SQL side can be reflected in the graph query in real time. Finally, performance of DB2 graph is very competitive to popular graph databases. Thank you.